I'm gonna move up real quick. Barely see me. This video covers the necessary steps that I feel it takes any med student preparing for step one and even comics one to pass the exams comfortably. And it's a systematic process that only works if you make these necessary steps, better prepare for consolidating these large volumes of information and be able to access this information through your practice questions. And if I'm able to pass, you're definitely able to pass too. Let's get right into this, but at first, if you're new, definitely consider subscribing. Both step one and complex level one are tricky exams, but with the right preparation, you can definitely do well, or at least clinch that passing score. Now, the system that I use is pretty multifaceted, multifaceted, and may apply to you to some degree. I definitely don't want you to take this video straightforward and make it a cookie cutter way of applying yourself and the preparation phases. Instead, I want you to see that there are certain takeaways that you can probably see in this video that might apply to you in your preparation. So use whatever I'm saying to whatever advantage you can think of in order to optimize your study. The first thing that I want you to take away from this video is figuring out how much time you need to study. And this includes your pre-dedicated and your dedicated periods. Now here's my anecdotal evidence or anecdotal experience. So I, so I set aside two and a half months from March 30th until test day, which was June 21st for me. It took me more than double the amount of time that an average medical student might take. Um, you might some you might see some people talking about taking four to six weeks, eight weeks, whatever. It varies from person to person. Now, I've always been a visual learner, so that means that I can't really just do Anki to learn the vast majority of information. I only did Anki for like select subjects in my preclinical years, like anatomy. I needed that extra step to graphically organize all that information that you need for step one like developing charts like full process charts or whatever um, piecing together certain concepts so given this i figured that two and a half months is more than necessary for me to have an appropriate time frame to do the exam and organizing a lot of this material takes time so i committed myself one month of straight content learning and another month and a half of dedicated studying so pre-dedicated in my case would be a month long and then dedicated would be a month and a half for some people it takes four to six weeks as i mentioned before because they already have a solid foundation on some of the harder subjects like cardiopalm or any other system-based learning. All in all, the first thing that I would suggest is figure out how much time you personally will need for both pre-dedicated and dedicated and stick to that time frame. Once you figure out the amount of time you need to prepare. The next thing that you need to understand is how can I maximally make the most of my pre-dedicated period? How can I take all the information from sketchy micro, sketchy farm, boards and beyond if I'm if I decide to use that, which I ended up admittedly not using. First aid, pathoma, dirty medicine. How can I take all these resources and make it more manageable and make it more consolidated into one place? I'll talk about dirty medicine later because he's a fantastic resource. I created study sheets from reading and just familiarizing whatever stuff I didn't know, like I wasn't very strong on. So when, when I first started, neurology was one of the first sections or one of the first bigger topics that I addressed. First and foremost, read Pathoma, first aid, any notes from you world if I did any questions. Um, and then I just made like a chart out of it. And I also watched Dirty Medicine videos as well because he has more information that is very, very important. Now, neurology can present with a wider range of topics, neurodegenerative diseases, cerebrovascular diseases, and even more. Focusing on the pathophysiology. Step one questions are driven by pathophysiology. 45 to 60% of the exam is on the pathology of the abnormal and the physiology of the normal and how those interplay. You need to be familiar with both in order to maximize your score. Now, pathoma is excellent for pathology. He's very, very comprehensive. Dr. Sitar did a great job in organizing all that information. Uh, this is the textbook that I use. Um, it's got great details. I went through it multiple times. For physiology, I use dirty medicine and a lot of first aid. Check the link in the description below to see his channel. Now, dirty medicine also covers a lot of pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology. I didn't really spend much time on them initially because I had sketchy micro and sketchy farm to work on. But basically, after reading and looking through all these resources, I made a chart out of the pathophysiology of the major topics and learned how to organize all that information. And then finally, I looked one last time to first aid to see what details I was missing in order to iron everything out and make it one piece. Now, the process of making charts takes a lot of time. I'm gonna actually pull it up real quick. So as you can see, I went old school and had this folder of everything. So as you can see right here. Yeah, I mean, I kind of paper clipped everything together, but basically this is covering all the dirty materials. 
and stuff. So as you can see, I used a bunch of different colored pens to highlight the distinguishing features and the key things that are unique to disease process. Um, this helped, this allowed me to pinpoint all the differences between the certain conditions. It's very, very important that you figure out the buzzwords because usually they have like, step one has like a huge paragraph and they'll give you a bunch of symptoms, give you like the little vignette. And all it takes is one sentence to really figure out what the disease is. And sometimes it makes no sense to read the whole thing and you can save a lot of time just by reading the question. For example, you'll see something like homorite rosettes or somoma bodies towards the end of the question stem. So recognizing these will help you identify the condition. I literally just used charts for every single organ system, covered all my bases, ultimately left no stone unturned. Now the process of making preliminary charts and just documents that helped me it took about three weeks to a month. And so after I was done everything, I, that basically concluded my pre-dedicated period. Meat and potatoes of your dedicated would be, and this is ultimately what is 80% of your studying for step one. Basically in the month and a half leading up to test day. I spent a vast majority of my time on UWorld doing about two practice question sets per day. Now on UWorld, if you don't know, you have the option of doing sets of 40 questions because on the actual step one exam, you have blocks of 40 questions at a time. They can be random, they can be from any organ system. Initially, you can do however many questions that you want, but I highly encourage you to start out with doing 40 questions in timed conditions and with tutor mode off. Now, many influencers have different opinions about this and different takes. I would say the very first couple of sections is try doing it in timed conditions and, in, and with tutor mode off. And if you're flustered and think that you're getting answers wrong because of the timing and because of the time constraint, you could start with untimed conditions and with tutor mode on just as how the dynamic of the questions is. But I would highly encourage you not to spend too much time doing it in this way because you need to get used to the time condition. The exam itself is timed and in real life, your exam time will fly by. During UWorld practice, I would have eight to nine minutes to spare towards the towards like the week of step one. But on my real step one exam, I barely finished with about one minute to spare. So anything I had flagged, any remaining questions that I just did, had to address, which is like around two to three, I had one minute to kind of answer everything in a rapid fire mode. So that's why I'm saying it's a, I'm a huge advocate for testing yourself with time conditions and with tutor mode off because you want to simulate the real deal as much as you possibly can. You don't want to mess with timing. And honestly, doing more UWorld questions helped me out, not just for step one, but also for complex level one. <coughs> Take the questions seriously, do them and review them, and you'll be fine. Which brings me to actually the second point, reviewing your practice questions. The amount of time you spend reviewing practice questions, at least initially, will be triple the amount of time doing the practice questions. The block of 40 questions on UWorld takes one hour to complete. So expect initially in the initial phases of your dedicated period to be spending around three hours reviewing every single question. But what do you actually do during the actual review? So I actually watched one of Dirty Medicine's videos and he suggested something that worked out for me. And I'll link his video so that you can watch it for yourself. But in case you don't want to watch, he basically says to read the paragraph long explanation entirely. If you don't know content for that question, spend some time learning it. Then spend about 30 seconds reading the wrong answer choices. Every single answer has a high yield topic that UWorld is covering. So if you spend some time reading and understanding the content behind that topic, your brain will start to develop neural connections about that topic. So each answer choice, whether it's right or wrong, is a high yield topic that will be repeated on UWorld and can actually be asked on step one. Now, the last thing after reading the wrong answer choices is to look at the main summary statement, which kind of consolidates everything and jot down what's happening in that one summary statement on in like a separate notebook. And I found that very, very particularly helpful. So at the bottom of the explanation, UWorld summarizes the high yield information. Some people use this and make an Anki card out of it. In my case, I kind of did what Dirty Medicine said. Yeah, so I kept a binder, it's pink, it's nice, it's really pretty. Um, and I literally just bought like sheets of paper and I wrote down every single thing. Let me show you. Yeah, so every single little thing that was covered in a wrong answer choice, I wrote it down and it, I tend to write a lot. So, you know, it, it's a, it's very, very dense, but I ended up rereading all these notes, you know, just passively, just on my free time, you know, and that's what allowed me to kind of consolidate everything 
and it definitely helped out for testing. And so, like I said, like I kept this notebook. I never really liked doing Anki for any of my content stuff, except for Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. Now, the reason why I mentioned this last step, like the jotting down a note for the last high yield information, your world is basically just a uh, learning tool. It provides great questions and asks you questions and allows you to engage in the content that you're supposed to learn for step one and level one. So not only are you developing stamina while you're practicing, but you're using it as like a, basically a textbook to develop your learning. Regardless of whether it's through Anki or through writing notes down, you need to revisit this information. So you need, if you're making Anki, do the Anki cards as much as you possibly can. Uh, if you're writing down notes like I, how I did, revisit the notes as much as you possibly can. And again, Dream Medicine explains this pretty well. So now that we talked about how to properly review your UWorld questions, I'm gonna now talk about what I did differently that allowed me to get that passing score. So whenever I got something wrong on UWorld, World, I would spend an extra bit of time updating the charts that I made during pre-dedicated. So I already had the charts. I got something wrong because I, it, the content just didn't click in my head or I didn't develop the correct methodology or like the correct way of thinking. And I would update that on the actual content chart. And they allow you to better parse through the other answer choices and eliminate it and increase your chances of getting the question right. However, I will say this extra step definitively increased my time for review even further. But it definitely paid off, uh, especially in the last week of studying when I was reviewing everything. I'm going to talk about some of the caveats uh, to consider for uh, your step one preparation. If you're with me so far, please consider subscribing. I greatly appreciate you guys supporting this channel. And leave a like if you think this video has helped so far. Number one, don't get tunnel vision in writing or making Anki cards or writing a bunch of notes. As you saw in my notebook, there was a lot of notes. And one of the things that if I could take it back or if I could go back in time, I wish I didn't spend that much time writing as much as I did as much as I did rereading all that information. So I made the mistake of writing every single small detail initially, and that actually bit me in the butt, especially during dedicated. Don't do that. You have limited time. So spend whatever time during your review learning the main thing that your world is trying to communicate. You will see the other answer choices again because your world basically covers everything and it covers it multiple times. So you'll be running through several passes of all the information based on that one explanation. It gets repeated multiple times. Number two, if you're a graphical or visual learner, like if you're making charts and everything, use an iPad. I mean, dude, look at these freaking notes, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, you can't, like, I can't even, like, erase some of this stuff out. I should have honestly used an iPad a little bit, but, you know, I wasn't thinking about any of that. I just needed to get information in my brain somehow in some quick way. Uh, and number three, if you're using Anki, make sure not to repeat some of the same cards that you're making. So like don't repeat some of the same concepts that you've all already covered and you've gotten wrong before, like once before. This can add to your card count and it'll just become overwhelming. That's one of the reasons why I honestly stopped doing Anki um, and doing the Anki of the cards that I made. I only did, if it's like anatomy, like I'll make a card and like a closed solution for specific things, but I honestly stopped using it for everything else. All right, very last point that you, that I wanted to discuss, take NBME exams throughout the entire course of your dedicated. A lot of medical students spent four to six weeks or slightly more than that, like seven to eight weeks preparing for step one, but many successful students take around four to five NBME exams. You need to be taking NBME exams because they're the best predictor of the amount of success that you'll have on the real exam. And after your NBME exams, you need to spend quite a bit of time reviewing all every single question. Again, it's gonna take double or triple the amount of time to review everything. Remember, every NBME exam is around four sections of 50 questions and not 40 questions. Take the exam in its entirety, under time conditions, with breaks in between as if it's the real step one exam. Can't stress that enough. If you're like pausing the exam and just looking up whether you got the answer right during the exam, please don't do that. I did that in the first exam and honestly, it might have skewed my score. I'm glad I didn't continue doing that because that's some that's what some med students do. Never, 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 don't do it. I, I promise you, it's gonna bite you in the butt. Take it honestly, and it'll tell you where you, you need to work on. Because that's the, that's the main thing. You have to be learning from this process. Okay, after you've taken the exam, don't do anything for the remainder of the day. The very next day, review two out of the four sections. Then the following day, review the last two sections. You can space out the exams so that you do like one per week. I always did NBME exams on the Friday of a, of a week so that I can review it on Saturday and Sunday. Now, this last point is entirely up to you. In order to still keep the mindset of doing practice questions, I still did 40 question blocks during the time I was reviewing for NBME. So basically, 
if I took NBME on that Friday, on Saturday when I was reviewing, when I was supposed to review for the first sections of NBME, of, of that respective NBME exam, I still did my 40 questions as part of the uh, preparation for dedicated. Now take this thing that I just mentioned with a grain of salt. You don't have to do your world while you're reviewing NBME. I know it's a lot of things that you need to do. It's a lot of grinding, but if you're neurotic like me, if you feel as though doing more questions will actually help you and make you feel like you're constantly prepared to do even more questions and maintaining that certain mindset of addressing or like doing step one questions, then go for it. So here's some final thoughts that I have. Your days during Dedicated are gonna be 10 to 12 hours. Initially, when you're doing UWorld questions, definitely expect to get 40s and you know 35s and stuff like that. That's totally normal. It's just a different nature of the exam. You're exposed to a different set of questions. So don't get frightened by that. It's totally natural. Second thing, please take breaks. If you know you can't study for more than two hours at a time, definitely take a break. Definitely consider doing like 50 minute like do a Pomodoro style or whatever, like 50 minutes of studying and then 10 minutes of like a break. This entire process, this entire like dedicated period, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You just won't digest the, the mountain of information by studying one stretch of five hours or like one stretch of however many hours. I know a lot of people post a lot of videos on how they can study for many hours at a time. It's just not worth it. Please take breaks. You will burn out. After that happens, it's over. All right, I kind of stressed on this earlier, but UWorld or whatever resources like Amboss or, you know, uh, the first state website like USMLE or RX or whatever, they're just study resources. The score for those don't, it doesn't matter as much as NBME. NBME is the most important predictor leading up to the actual exam. Even though I, I know I'm saying this now, but I know that you type A's will stress out about the small skip in the score and just don't do it. Don't worry too much about it. I was one of them. It's not fun. Last thing to remember, I would say, is to prioritize your resources. So there's a lot of topics and there's a lot of resources that you need. Uh, Pathoma is definitely one of the things that you have to prioritize. This thing is a godsend. The first three chapters are a must read, front to back, type, uh, cover every single word in the chapter because they ask questions straight out of the first three chapters. I cannot stress that enough. I got 20 questions on the real exam. You know, it, I covered all my bases by reading these chapters and I got easy questions. Second thing, Sketchy is a very, very important source. Do micro and farm. I highly encourage you to do that because it definitely helps with harder micro and farm questions, but why make it harder when you can cover it early on? I remember going through all these resources 100% completion four times, especially for Pathoma. Like that's just, you, you, you gotta do it. It's just not. Dirty Medicine, like I mentioned before, at the, at the start of this video, Dirty Me Medicine is a is largely recommended. He's great because he was the one that started to organize a lot of the material in very, very digestible ways. He has mnemonics for everything. And I feel like some of the other resources don't really help with that. Yeah, definitely check out his channel. He's great, absolutely goaded. I ended up watching nearly all his videos, especially if you're a DO student. Um, he has a separate playlist for for us just on Comlex and Level 1 OMM. Basically watch all of his OMM videos. Super helpful. Definitely check it out. I even prepared for his behavioral section on Dirty Medicine and U World for the behavioral section. So you name like, like psychi psychiatry, ethics, whatever, right? I prepared using Dirty Medicine and U World. I didn't even open first aid for that. So something to consider too. Step one is a grind. I was able to pass because I had to tinker with a bunch of ideas to help figure out what worked for me. But then again, a lot of what was covered in this video should be taken with a grain of salt. Some of it might apply to you, some of it might not apply to you, and that's okay. I just wanted to provide what my experience has been and I hope it helps someone. The amount of success on step one is directly correlated with the amount of preparation that you put in. So the more questions that you do on UWorld, the more time you spend reviewing those questions, the more Anki you made from those questions or the more notes you took based on the questions that you got wrong. And the more time you spend reviewing all that material, the more you do to consolidate all your weak concepts, the better off you'll be on the actual test taking environment. Only natural for you to see certain patterns of uh, thinking, it just comes with practice and experience experience with these type of questions. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for your support. I know it was a lot, but trust the process and most importantly, trust in your preparation. I always like keeping it real with you. See you in the next video. Peace.